It has nothing to do with fear. Uh, Pastor Bob asked me to pray for a few uh, things. Um, Holly, this is your dad. Uh, Holly's dad is going to be in for aneurysm surgery on Tuesday, so we just want to lift them him up before the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. You sent your word and you healed them, Father. We just pray for um, salvation, sozo life, spirit, soul, and body to come to them in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. We just declare uh, the doctor's hand would be guided and that they would uh, go in and remove anything that would cause harm to him in the name of Jesus. We just give you all the praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Uh, continue to pray for Jim. He had his surgery, and he's moving along with recovery of that, so pray for recovery for him. And also for our Susie over in treatment. So, Lord, we just praise you and thank you for the work that you're doing in Susie's life over in rehab. Father, we just praise you and thank you that... Christ is being formed in her, God, and we just thank you for all the good things that you're doing in her life right now. We lift her up before you. We bless her. We thank you, God, for everything that you do for her right now in Jesus' name over there in Windsor. We mm -hmm. just give you the praise, and we thank you for a speedy recovery, Lord, for Jim. Thank you for bringing healing and wholeness to his entire body from the top of his head to the soles of his feet and drive out anything that is not of you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles to Psalms 91. I thought Nada was going to preach my message. Where is she? I was like, hey. She was looking at my notes. Obviously, in light of all the fear that I've, I've been seeing and hearing, We've got to keep things in perspective. It's really, really important. I'm not saying not to be wise, and that's why we're not doing the handshake thing, no problem. There's certain elements of it that we can reduce risk. I think that's wise, and that's good too. Uh, but at the same time too, you've, you've got to keep things in perspective and remember who you are and what God is doing in our community and what God is doing in the life of those that believe. Psalms 91 verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Here's some scriptures for you if you're taking notes this morning. 1 Samuel 19.2 talks about hiding in a secret place. Psalms 81 verse 7, uh, the secret place of His presence. Psalms 27 verse 5. I'm going to go back there and read that one to you. Psalms 27 and verse 5. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, his presence. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Place of your presence. So where is the secret place? In his presence. So when he's talking about praying and when he's talking about relationship, it really is relationship above religion. It's not about route, doing just what is right. Those are all important things. But it's about being in the presence of God. And I, just this morning, I really sensed we were in the presence of God. Nadie did such a remarkable job. Where is she? I just wanted to tell her. I just was... Uh... She's what? She's in a secret place. Ah. Oh. The bathroom, the throne room, okay. I got you, I got you. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6 uh, in the New Testament, just to confirm again. Matthew chapter 6. And verse 6. But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you... secret place. His presence is what we need. 
Pray like you've never prayed before. Spend time with God. Shut the door. Shut out all distractions. That's what it means to shut the door. You don't want any distractions, people around you, noise, music, television. Turn everything off and just spend time with God. I think it's one of the hardest things to do, especially if you have an addictive tendency in your personality. Uh, we, we tend to be addicted to busyness and noise and movement. I don't know, you go somewhere to eat and there's like 16 TVs and I'm sitting there trying to look at somebody and behind the screen is a TV with flashing advertisement and flashing this. And I'm like, man, I've got to sit somewhere else and not come here again. Because it's like, well, you know, you, you're being distracted. So it's, it's a real discipline to learn to close the door, as the Lord said. Maybe that's the key for some of us, learning to close the door. Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Ah, I love it. Under the shadow of the Almighty. Does it not say in Psalms 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So we can choose to be under the shadow of the enemy or we can choose to be under the shadow of God. And the nice thing about it is we have a choice to make today whose shadow we want to be under. I'm declaring that we are under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm declaring that this house, this family, and everything where we are willing to believe, I love the fact that you're willing to believe God for your dad. I was thinking of that verse that said uh, that uh, when the Lord comes back, will he find faith? Yes, he will find faith. People believing God for other people, for their parents, for family, for their kids, for finances, for relationship, for miracles. Miracles come, but the Bible says, through the hearing of faith. My God, may we preach faith, may we hear faith, may our faith soar, and may we see miracles in our midst. I believe in a miraculous God, and I believe in miracles. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Let's say that together. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Confession's a really, really important thing. It's really important for you, and, and I would encourage you to do this at home. Sometimes when you are reading the Bible, just stand up and read it out loud in your home. Read it out loud and listen to yourself as you speak and read the Word of God. There's something about the Word of God that is infused with the DNA of heaven. There's something about activating that through confession. Read the Word of God out loud over your situation. The promises of God. Take two, three promises and speak them over a situation. I am praying for so-and-so. And here's what the Word says. And read those verses out loud in prayer. In your home. In that secret place. Learn to shut the door, whatever that may be for you. Leave your phone in another room. Whatever you got to do, turn your phone off. Oh my goodness, did I say it out loud? People, oh man, I got like so much to do today and I've got like a hundred phone calls. Turn your phone off. Whatever happened to, you know, 20 years ago where we didn't carry our phones around. Man, I leave the house, I forget my phone. I've got to turn back around, drive six blocks to come back and get my phone because what would I do without my phone? How'd I get up here? <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Oh, he's my God and Him will I trust. Absolutely. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Well, there's someone out to get you, isn't there? And there are to the ground depending on what they're trying to catch. And when you run through, it tightens and gets tighter and tighter and tighter until it chokes the life out of you. That's what a snare does. Satan sets up traps because he knows what we want. He knows what we like. He knows what tendencies we have. But he will deliver us from the snare of the fowler. Glory to God. Especially if we stay on his path. 
especially if we follow His ways and His Word. And from the perilous pestilence, pestilence, the epidemic of disease, or pandemic, you choose your words, I suppose. I don't care what the world says. I'm choosing to believe what God says. That He's bigger than a disease. He's bigger than COVID-19. He's bigger than coronavirus. He's bigger. He's bigger. Our God is bigger. He shall cover you with His feathers. And under His wings you shall take refuge. Did He not say in the New Testament, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, He said, you know, I, you know, I sent you the prophets, you stoned them, but, but how often I desired to cover you as, as a hen does her chicks to protect them, to be under His wings, under His shadow. That's where I choose to be is under His wings and under His shadow. He said, but you were not willing. Ah, oh, isn't that sad? There's provision and protection under the blood and the name of Jesus, and Christians are not willing to walk underneath that. I'm not saying it's wrong to take medication. I'm not saying it's wrong for you at all to take, you know, immune boosting stuff, to eat right, to do whatever you got to do. Go ahead and do that. But don't put your trust in it, put your trust in God. If you think that by doing that you're going to live longer, you are deceiving yourself. I knew a guy, his father, his grandfather, his father, his brother, all died at the age of 53 or something like that, or 55. So this guy was eating right, he was exercising, he was taking immune supplements and boosting, and he was doing everything, and guess what happened? 55 years of age, he died. Why? Because the fear was greater than what he was doing. It didn't matter anyway. Amen. It was about dealing with the fears. Fear invites problems. Fear invites trouble. Fear is a force that actually amplifies the signal of the demonic. Did you know that? Did you know that demons are attracted to fear? They can smell it. They can pick up on it. Fear actually brings to you closer the thing that you're afraid of. That's why it has to be addressed. God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has not given us the spirit of phobias, phobos. Oh my goodness. And watch your confession in your mouth during this next few weeks. Oh, you know, if... It, Whenever we get sick, it's always our household first that gets sick. Well, so be it. Watch your mouth. You know what? Every year, yep, we get sick in our house. But I'm believing God for protection and the life of God in my home this year. That's it. That's enough. I'm not talking like that no more. God, forgive me. You protect me. You watch over us. You bless this house. And I trust you, Lord. Amen. Let's go on and read some more. And under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Your shield quenching every fiery dart. Disease is a fiery dart. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of pestilence that walks in darkness. That's disease nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side. From what? From disease. And ten thousand at your right hand, the hand of favor where all your friends are. But it shall not come nigh you. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. I wrote down in my notes today, the question isn't what, what, do we, what do we do? What do we do? That's not the question. Sometimes it's more important to know the question than what you think the answer may be. We pride ourselves on knowing what the answer is. Well, what good's the answer if it's the wrong question? It's useless. 
The question isn't what do I do? The question is am I right with God? Am I seeking God? Is God first in my life? Am I really pursuing the heart of God? That's the question. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Why? Because you've chosen to seek the heart of God. I'm seeking after God. I'm not perfect. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I am in the drawer. (laughs) For He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you from all your ways. COVID-19 tries to get around you and there's these big angels like, nope, leave them alone. Can't, nope, nope. God sends His angels to protect me. Hallelujah. Wow, I'm so glad. Thank You, Lord. I bless Your name. To keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Oh, I love it. Because He has sent His love upon me, therefore I will deliver Him. Do you love God? Do you love His Word? Do you love seeking His face? Let me tell you something. You're protected. You're protected. You're protected. Your home is protected. Wherever your faith goes, it brings protection in life. Because He has set His love upon me, therefore I will deliver Him. I will set Him on high because He has known my name and He shall call upon me. He has known my name. Acts chapter 19. The seven sons of one priest named Sceva went to cast the devil out of a a guy. And they said, we adjure you. Boy, and I could just imagine how adjuring they were. We adjure you. By Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Come out of that man. They saw it work. They know it works. People get delivered from demonic activity, disease, destruction, death. People have seen it work. So we, we adjure you by Paul, by Jesus, who Paul preaches. And the devil spoke through these men and said, Jesus, I know, like I know really well. Paul, I'm acquainted with, but who the heck are you? Because He has known My name. Use the name. Use the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus over your home and family. He shall call upon Me and I will answer Him. I will be with Him in trouble. I will deliver Him and honor Him. With long life I will satisfy Him and show Him My salvation. Luke 10.19 Luke 10, 19. These are all verses that you know and have been reminded of and are being reminded of again. Nothing new this morning. Just that God is good. The whole, the whole, Nita, I thought you were going to preach my whole sermon. I was like, did you see my notes? That was good. That was really good. I was like, well, we're on the right track. Behold, I give you authority. Behold, I give authority. Who authority? You authority. Believers. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. These signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Let's go back a couple of verses. Sorry. I might have jumped ahead there. I know I've got it written down here somewhere. Nope. Next verse, you rebuke them for their hardness of heart and unbelief. That's a good one. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Next verse. Next verse. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Some of us need that even more than ever. And I don't mean speaking in tongues. I mean watch your mouth. These signs will follow those who believe in My name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. That's who we are as believers. We've been given authority. Luke 10, 19, once again. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, 
Is that not what we just read in Psalms 91? It's exact. It's a quote from there. Behold, I give you authority. So if it was written thousands of years previous and he's reiterating it, saying that same authority that was given back then is here today, 2,000 years later, it's still here today. We have been given authority. If you are not under authority, you will not operate in authority. You cannot be an independent Lone Ranger and think that you've got authority when you're not connected to the body. So you've got to do your very level best to be connected in relationship because it's in the relationship that the authority is expressed. Yes, I know you need to have a relationship with, oh, I love Jesus, and that's all I need is to love Jesus. What, and exclude everyone else? I can tell you right now, you're deceived. You're deceived. You're afraid, and you're using that as a cover up so that you can do what you want to do. Okay, that's a good word. I can see that one really, really well. Fear has to bow to the blood and the name. The blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus. We certainly need to be safe. We need to be wise. But we cannot live in fear. Don't gossip. Don't repeat half-baked stories. Don't, you know, forward text that you can't verify that are true, be careful what you share. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, you don't, know if, you don't even know if it's true. Yeah. I mean, Janice sent out a, a memo about you can't get COVID-19 from a dog. Thank God I looked at my dog and I said, oh, that's good news. <laughs> get over here. Let me give you a hug. Watch your mouth. Watch your confession. Job 3.25, please. Job 3.25. And I know that this is not the literal context of the verse, but the point is still valid when I share this verse, Job 3.25. For the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. I, I really believe that fear invites disaster. I really believe that fear opens the door to destruction. I'm not suggesting for a moment that you should not be aware, that you should not, you know, be careful. You know, our, our, we're, we're not shaking hands unless you want a hug from me. I'll, I'll give you a hug, no problem. If that's cool with you, it's cool with me. I'm not worried about it. Because you might catch my health. So, you know, praise God. Uh, and I'm not being a smart ass either. Well, just so you know. And we put some uh, hand sanitizer around and we wanna, we're want to. we going to do a big spring cleaning soon. Nate is going to announce it shortly. And we're going to come and we're really going to clean the place. We're going to clean up the children's church and make sure that it's just spotless and very clean. We made that announcement. So if you can volunteer, please see Sarah or Nate at the end of the service. And let's really do a good job. Let's go back to the Scriptures again. Job 3.25, the thing that I feared came to me. The thing that I greatly feared or I dreaded has happened to me. Fear opens the door to destruction. Fear is faith in destruction. Fear is faith in evil. Fear is Faith that in evil's ability to do whatever it wants, whenever it wants. That's why you've got to quell and deal with those areas of fear in your life. If you see yourself, and just listen to yourself talk. If you're talking doubt and unbelief and pronouncing destruction over everything, I think sometimes because we can speak negative and things come to pass, we actually get a twisted sense of affirmation. See, I told you that was going to happen. That doesn't make you a prophet. All you're doing is you're just being used by the devil to create destruction around you. Start speaking faith. Watch your mouth. I mean, I know people who can prophesy into existence the destruction around their life. That doesn't, you shouldn't get a sense of affirmation from that. I hope to God I'm wrong. 
Start speaking the Word of God. Speaking truth over your life. Fear just cannot do whatever it wants to do. 1 Peter 5, verse 8, Satan walks around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He has to have permission. Guess who gives him permission? You do. I do. Through disobedience, through sin, through negative confession, we open doors. You can blame whoever you want, but I'm telling you right now, the buck stops here. Watch your mouth. Speak the Word of God. And if you're afraid, go to God and say, God, listen, listen. I'm afraid, God. I'm terrified. Please fill me with faith in the midst and cleanse my heart of all this garbage, unbelief, negativity. Please help me, God. And repent of it. And then ask God to fill your mouth with faith. So when it comes to a situation and you're shaking like a leaf and you don't know what to, and you start to speak the word of God, eventually what will happen is you'll become confident and bold. God filled the disciples with boldness and they spoke confidently. That was the Spirit of God moving. The Spirit of God wants to move in your life in this season. It's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity to walk in faith. John 10.10 says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to bring life and to bring it more abundantly. That's the Jesus we serve. He's a thief. Yep, he's coming to steal. COVID-19 is coming to steal life. Jesus says, I'm going to bring life more abundantly. Bring it on, Jesus. Hallelujah. We receive it. Thank you for life more abundantly. Jesus said in John 14, verse 27, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Fear. Fear does. Bring your fears to the Lord. Bring them to the cross. Bring them to the blood of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. I love this verse. My son. In the midst of your heart. That's how you keep your heart from being afraid, by the way. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your faith. Keep the Word of God and it will bring health to all your flesh. Psalms 107, verse 20, He sent out His Word and He healed them and He rescued them from the grave. From destruction. That's the God that we serve. COVID-19 is designed to bring you to the grave. God is greater than the grave. And faith and prayer are greater than the devil and the disease that he brings to communities. We speak life, blessing, health, and protection over the city of Sudbury. Over every family and home that's related to this church, we have the authority to speak life, blessing, I speak life and blessing, protection, divine favor, and the power of God, and an increase of faith like never before in Jesus' mighty name. Matthew 24. I know you're not going to believe this, but the Bible talked that this would happen. (laughs) Then Jesus went out, and He departed from the temple, and His disciples came to show Him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now as He said on the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came to Him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, 
For many will come in my name, saying that I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, disease, epidemic disease, and earthquakes in various places, and all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Here's some good news in the midst of bad news. Jesus is coming back. Thank God. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and there's going to be all kinds of problems and lawlessness will abound. Pestilence, a fatal epidemic disease. He said that that's going to happen. Well, all right, Jesus is coming back. Glory to God. And then let, let, let me share with you the question one more time. Not the answer, the question. Are you right with God? Do you have faith in God? Here's a confession I want you to repeat after me. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We are protected by the blood of Christ. We are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. We are blessed, highly favored, and divinely protected. I have made the Lord the center of my life. Therefore, I am protected from destruction and disease. I live in the secret place. I refuse to be afraid. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil or disease, for you are with me. I surrender all I am, all I own, all my life to you, my God. Thank you for protection for life and freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give someone an air high five, an elbow greeting before you leave today. God bless you. We love you. And we're praying for great things and the miraculous in your life. Have a good day.